Welcome friends to our new video where we will be studying about light amplification by stimulated emission of radiation or which is commonly called as laser. So this is the full form of the word laser that is light amplification by stimulated emission of radiation. So let us understand by this word by word. What is light? Light are transverse wave or EM wave that we have studied previously. If the amplification of light occurs by the method of stimulated emissions, that is the emissions are not natural, that are stimulated emissions that I will be telling you in further videos. What is stimulated emissions of radiations? Since they are EM waves and they are radiated from a source, so this process is known as light amplification by stimulated emission of radiation. So what is that? It is a source that produces an intense concentrated and highly parallel beam of coherent light. So let me write down these. These are very important for the definitions. It is a source which produce intense concentrated parallel beams of coherent light so these are the properties of the light that is produced laser action encompasses interactions between atoms or molecules in gases solids or liquids and electromagnetic fields it works on the principle of quantum theory of light. Now let me write down the properties of laser and comparison with ordinary light. So what are the main properties of laser light? Number one is they are monochromatic hence the property will be monochromaticity. This is one of the properties of laser light. Laser is highly monochromatic radiation. The normal or conventional monochromatic source of light has a wider range of wavelength. That is the vibjor we all know. But laser can be produced only from lamps that are monochromatic in nature. For example, sodium vapor lamps. So this is an important property of laser light. Number two is directionality directionality which indicates that lasers are unidirectional they are concentrators because of this property number three is intensity laser emits narrow beams of light so the energy of laser beam is concentrated in a very small regions hence laser beams are strongly intense and number four is coherence what is coherence the laser radiation is perfectly coherent as it emits beam of light waves having same phase. To obtain laser, these four properties are the most essential one. So ordinary lights emit incoherent light. That is, let me write here. Ordinary light are incoherent. That is the combination of wavelengths may be yellow, blue, red, green, those are different in phase and have a phase difference of a few bigger values. Hence, ordinary light is incoherent light, whereas laser have the same phase in every wavelength, hence it is coherence. So these are the properties of laser light. Now, let us learn about 
the basic properties of transitions. So we can see that there are three known phenomena that is absorption, spontaneous emission and stimulus emission. Number one is absorption. Number two is spontaneous emission whereas number three is stimulated emission so these are three main processes what are these let me explain to you if let this be the lower energy state of an atom E1 and let this be the upper energy state or higher energy state of an atom E2. If the natural atom is here in E1 and a photon of energy H nu strikes it and the energy of the photon is absorbed by the atom and it goes into the higher energy state. This phenomena is known as absorption. So after absorption, two things may happen. So number one is spontaneous emission. Let me write it as number two so that you can understand better. As I have written, it is number two here. So spontaneous emission may occur. That is this is E2, this is E1 as previous one. The excited atom may come to its natural state as it is excited here and every object in the universe tends to stay in its minimum energy state. So the atom may come spontaneously, that is normally in the lower energy state giving away a photon with energy H nu. Either this may happen or stimulated emission may happen, that is our number 3 this is e2 and this is e1 as before so the atom is here and let me show it with a different color so that you can understand as this is the phenomena for laser production if we have to strike the higher energy atom with another photon having energy H nu and then it comes to its lower energy state E1 giving away another photon of the same frequency H nu. So this is the laser light that we obtain. So this phenomena is important for the laser production hence laser will be produced when stimulated emission may take place. So this is basically the working principle of the laser or the principle by which the lasing action takes place or occurs. So again I am repeating this, if the atom is in the higher energy state and we have to forcefully that is by stimulated emission we have to forcefully bring it to the lower energy state from the metastable state then it gives away similar photon of similar frequency hence we get two photons so this is how we obtain the laser light now we will be defining population inversion and pumping action now let us define what is population inversion from Maxwell Boltzmann statistics that we have studied we know that the number of atoms present in a particular energy state is called the population so the number of atoms present in a particular state is called its population 
so at any time it is defined as n2 that is equal to n1 into e to the power minus del e by kt that is equal to n1 in the form of photon energy we can write it as minus h nu by kt where del e is equal to e2 minus e1 that is equal to the photon energy h nu so this is the formula for calculating the population or the number of atoms in a particular state here in this formula n2 and n1 represents the number of atoms in energy e1 and e2 respectively so to produce a higher percentage of simulated emission for achieving a strong laser beam the number of atoms in higher energy state that is n2 should be larger than n1 this phenomena is known as population inversion so what is population inversion population inversion is the state where n2 must be greater than n1 to produce a higher value or a strong laser beam now let us see what is lasing or lasing action after achieving population inversion the process which leads to the emission of stimulate photons due to the transition of atoms from the metastatic stage or metastable state to the ground state is known as lasing so this process includes the transition of atoms from its metastable state to its ground state is known as the lasing action the process by which the atoms in the lower energy state are raised to the higher energy state in the active medium to create population inversion is called pumping so there is another definition a very important definition that is of pumping so let me write the definition of pumping for you all so here is the definition of pumping process by which the atoms in the lower energy state are raised to the higher energy state in the active medium to create population inversion is known as pumping process it is a very important process to attain population inversion so basically there are three types of pumping we can do number one is optical pumping number two is electrical pumping and number three is chemical pumping in optical pumping a light source like flash lamp is used to supply luminous energy and create population inversion by optical photon in electrical pumping electrical discharge converts the gas medium into plasma and liberates electrons in chemical pumping the energy comes from a chemical reaction that is exothermal reaction so these are the three basic types of pumping we use in our daily laboratory processes now let us go into a deeper topic or a very important topic from the examination point of view that is einstein theory of laser and relation between einstein's coefficient a and b so from the previous considerations we know that n2 is the number of electrons in energy state 2 e2 or n1 is the number of electrons number of atoms in energy state u1 so n2 is the number of atoms in e2 and n1 will be the number of atoms in 
E1. Now, an atom may raise to the excited state E2 from the ground state E1 in presence of radiation of frequency nu. So let this be the frequency of the radiation absorbing which the atom raised from E1 to E2. But the rate of absorption is proportional to the number of atoms per unit volume. So we can write the rate of absorption is proportional to the number of atoms per unit volume that is n1 is available for ground state e1 so we can write this so the number of absorption per unit volume per unit time so the number of absorption per unit volume per unit time will be given by TAB equal to capital B12 in 1 U nu. Name this as 1. Here B12 is Einstein's coefficient of absorption of radiation where from lower energy state to higher energy state. Now the atoms in the excited state E2 emit radiation when they return to ground state. So it is possible by two ways. So return of atoms is possible through two ways. Let it be number one and this be number two. So number one it will must be spontaneous emission and number two as you all know what is it? It is stimulated emission. So these are the processes. We know the spontaneous emission does not depend upon intensity of incident light as because it is spontaneously occurs. It is proportional to the number of atoms per unit volume or we can say in 2 available in the excited state. So the number of spontaneous emission per unit volume per unit time can be defined as TSP that is spontaneous emission is equal to A21 into N2. This is very important. Name this as number 2 as it is dependent on N2. Similarly, the N2 would also relax in the metastable state where under the influence of stimulating photon, stimulated emission would occur. But the rate of stimulated emission per unit volume TST will be presented by TST that is rate of stimulated emission. It is dependent on B21 into N2 into U nu since it is dependent on the frequency of the incident photon and limit as 3. So when thermal equilibrium is reached that is at equilibrium Let me draw a line for better understanding. At equilibrium, the rate of upward transitions must be equal to the rate of downward transitions. So we can write upward transition rate is equal to downward 
transition rate. Hence, by putting the values, we get TAB is equal to TSP plus TST, that is absorption, spontaneous emission, and stimulated emissions. Or we can write N1 B12 into U of nu equal to A21 N2 plus P21 N2 U of nu. So after writing this, by solving, we will get N1 B12 minus B21 N2 into U of nu equal to A21 into N2. Or we can write U of nu is equal to N2 A21 by N2 into B12 into N1 by N2 minus B21 or that can be equal to A21 by N1 by N2 into B12 minus B21. Now at thermal equilibrium N1 and N2 are related by Boltzmann law that at thermal equilibrium at thermal equilibrium N2 by N1 as I have written before will be equal to e to the power minus e2 minus e1 by kt let me give you a bracket here that is equal to e to the power minus h nu by kt where h nu is equal to e2 minus e1 and k is the Boltzmann constant. So what will happen now? Now after defining that if we insert the value of n1 by n2 in this equation we will get first let me write what we have obtained previously we have obtained u of nu equal to a21 by n1 by n2 into b12 minus b21 so if we put the value of n1 by n2 we will get a21 by b12 into 1 by e to the power h nu by kt in minus b21 by b12 now According to Planck's law, we have u of nu equal to 8 pi h nu cube by c cube into 1 by e to the power h nu by kt minus 1. So, if we compare, first let me name this as equation number 4. So now, if we compare both the equations, we will get B. So comparing both the equations, we will get B21 by B12 will be equal to 1 or b21 is equal to b12 an important conclusion and we will also get a21 by b12 is equal to 8 pi h nu cube by c cube or 
we can say a21 by b21 is equal to 8 pi h nu cube by c cube an important conclusion since b1 to equal to b21 we can replace the value of b12 by b21 so these relations these relations are known as einstein's relations or einstein's equations this way einstein's coefficient are related to each other so this was the relation between einstein's coefficient so what are the physical significance of this coefficients so from the above equations we can write b21 equal to a21 into c cube by 8 pi h nu cube we can write this from equation we get the ratio of the rate of stimulated emission to the rate of spontaneous emission if we define this ratio as r we will get the value as b21 into n2 into u into nu by a21 into n2 that is equal to 1 by e to the power h nu by kt minus 1 so this is the relation or ratio of rate of stimulated emission to the rate of spontaneous emission also the probability of stimulated emission is more compared to spontaneous emission in microwave region since in microwave region h nu is very very less than kt so the probability of stimulated emission is very greater than or more than spontaneous emission also the probability of stimulated emission is negligible compared to spontaneous emission in visible region we can also derive that in visible region lambda similar to 6000 angstrom or temperature similar to 10 to the power 3 k hence the probability of stimulated emission is negligible in the visible region so that was all about einstein's coefficients his laser theory is relations between coefficients and the significance of a and b